so please start now okay thank you ma'am uh, so very good morning to all the participants and uh, <coughs> the 21 days uh, national refresher course organized by uh, nadc and then uh, uh, College of Veterinary Science and Animal Husbandry, Birsa Agricultural University, Ranchi, Jharkhand, uh, uh, under the NAEF, and the uh, refresher course is the recent uh, technologies of the livestock-based integrated farming system, or doubling the farmer income. And uh, uh, I am very much thankful uh, to the organizing institute for uh, giving me an opportunity. Uh, to give the deliver the lecture on uh, sustainable resource management or uh, climate smart integrated farming system so i will cover this topic sustainable resource management for climate smart integrated farming system and uh, as you know that i am the in charge of the uh, this uh, project yes on integrated farming system all over india the different uh, uh, research projects are there and uh, for uh, Maharashtra, this is one of the important projects uh, for our uh, Mahatma Phule Agricultural University, uh, Rahuri, uh, Maharashtra. So, uh, first we should know that what we mean by that integrated farming system. We should uh, understand the concept because uh, uh, we, we, the integration of different compound is very important when we are going for the integrated farming system. Uh, so many times we are going only for the monocropping and in that either it may be the crop component or the horticulture but when we are going for the integration the recycling is the important component and how we can reduce the what <coughs> the input cost that is important in the integrated farming system as well as whatever the output of one is the input for the other and this is the main objective of the integrated farming system so what is that integrated farming system in simple way we can say that the Integrated farming system uh, is a component of the farming system research and that introduces the change in the farming techniques for maximum production, especially in the cropping system as well as in the artificial component and take care of the optimal utilization of the resources. <coughs> so whatever the resources we are using, how efficiently we are using that yield source, that is uh, important. <coughs> then uh, farm waste. Earlier we are talking about the waste, but uh, as far as the whatever the today's situation, either it may be integrated farming system or the organic farming. So that is not the waste, but that is the waste. And so that how whatever that farm is there, farm waste is there, how you can use as a waste in the integrated farming system. And uh, so for better recycle for for the productive purposes in the integrated farming system. And uh, it is, uh, all these compounds are integrated, especially the interlinking is there. So interlinking of the, each component, uh, especially the few crops or the livestock or the animals and the related activity is there. And in simple way, we can say that the, what is that integrated farming city? So raising of the crop. So the, whatever the crop compound is there in association with the uh, dairy, goat, poultry, fishery, apiary or the mushroom rearing and the horticultural compounds with an object. What is the object of that? When, when we are going for the association with the different uh, allied enterprises. So the main aim is the, to recycle the farm residue effectively, then reduce the input cost, and then create round the year employment. Employment, you can get the opportunity of the employment generation and <coughs> enhances the net profit. So while maintaining the soil fertility for sustainable production of the farm. And here the one important thing is there. So you, you can get the money round here. So how we can get the money round here? So just like the, suppose the uh, poultry compound is there and if you, that uh, compound is for the broiler purpose, you can get the 40 to 45 days. Uh, so the, you can get the money from that one lot. Even though the, if, there is, if it is for the layer purpose, then you can get the daily money from that eggs also. So according to that, if the seasonal crops are there, you can get the income within the, we can say the, uh, three to four months. Horticultural compound is there, you have to get the income, we can say the uh, once in a year or twice in a year. And the dairy compound is there, so the whatever the milk production is there, so that also you can get the income monthly. So in that way, so the farmer can get the income throughout the year, through, throughout the year, 
and so due to the circulation of the money so whatever the inputs uh, you want to purchase for the crop component or the agricultural component that will be possible from that allied enterprises like the dairy goat uh, uh, or the poultry component in there so <coughs> how we can achieve the sustainable livelihood and in that uh, specially the maximum we can say whatever the enterprises who are selecting there should be the minimum competition and there should be the complementary effect so the one, one compound is beneficial for the other then uh, sustainable and environmental friendly so it should be the environmental friendly or we can say the eco friendly then uh, maximum recycling of the by product is possible so uh, suppose the just like the uh, crop compound you are taking so whatever the residue material is there so you have to incorporate again into the soil to maintain or to build up the soil fertility you know the whatever the uh, uh, waste material after we uh, feed into the livestock whatever that waste material is there you can use for the preparation of the good quality of the vermi compost so in that way there is the recycling is there so every material you can use whatever the waste we are saying that that you can use in the you have to convert that into the waste and uh, reducing the market dependency for the agricultural inputs because whatever the output of one is the input for the other so how we can say that what is the output of one so just like the crop compound is there and in that the maize crop is there so the maize crop whatever the grain fodder is there you can utilize for the livestock so that is the input for the livestock again from the livestock whatever the cow dung is there so that will be the output from that livestock and that becomes the input for the uh, soil and so that definitely that helps to improve the soil fertility so in that way we can uh, uh, utilize or uh, we can recycle the uh, these uh, products reducing the market uh, dependency for the agricultural inputs so definitely we cannot uh, so most of the things that are on farm inputs okay so we are not purchasing from the market so the main aim is the so whatever the output is the one for, uh, input for the other and in that way we are working increase the farm income family nutrition and the soil health so according to the indian council of medical research so whatever the nutritional requirement is there either it may be the fruits vegetables <coughs> then eggs meat then milk is there so whatever the standards are there so for fulfilling the one family needs so we are producing at our own farm and that is the concept of that and we can get the whatever the concept of the nutritional security is there and as you know that whatever the 17 sustainable development goals are there out of that 13 sustainable goal can fulfill the requirement of that 17 sustainable goals uh, 13 17 out of that 17 13 fulfill through the integrated farming system and so that's why how that integrated farming system is important in the uh, uh, whatever the achievement of that sustainable development goals are there. so uh, these are the components which are the different components of the integrated farming system just you have to see because nowadays you see the small and marginal farmer whatever the categorization is there large farm then the medium farmers are there then the small farmers are there and if the farmer is having the land holding less than the 1 hectare that we can call as a marginal farmer and the small and marginal farmer so all over india if you see the total number of percent of the small and marginal farmers are more than 86% and so that's why the integrated farming system plays important role under this situation where the small and marginal farmer strength is more than the 86% and <clears throat> so we can achieve through the integrated farming system so which are the different components of the integrated farming system that is the crop compound is there so whatever the different cereal pulses oil seeds uh, the oil seeds are there then horticulture compounds are there so either it may be that crops are irrigated food crops or the you can say the rain fed food crops are there or the aerial food crops are there those are we having the less water requirement so according to that according to the location specific we are selecting these compounds so the location specific compound either it may be the livestock crop or the horticulture is there <coughs> these compounds are location specific and uh, here the crop compound is there then the bee keeping is there then sericulture compound Uh, that is also the goal for the dry and dry agriculture then the dairy compound is there so whether you are preparing the uh, cross bred cow or the indigenous cow so the just like the trend of the organic farming is there under that situation we are recommending the you have to go for the indigenous cow but uh, as far as the more return is concerned either it may be jersey or the holistic region is there or even though the our university 
and uh, now we are working for the marginal farmers also the, if the farmer is having land only only one acre is there so according to that we are formulating this type of the model also <coughs> this is the we can say when the dry land situation is there uh, or the rain fed uh, uh, ifs model is there in that uh, you don't go for only the sole cropping or the mono cropping you have to go for the inter cropping also because if the one crop get failure at least you can get the more income from the another one is there and whatever their habits are different one there should not be the competition with the each other whatever the crops who are selecting in the inter cropping so that uh, are complementary with each other with the, uh, their uh, harvesting period is different one one matures earlier the, the another one then will start one uh, first crop is at uh, harvesting then second crop will be at uh, we can say the flowering stage so according to that their compete there is no competition for the sunlight nutrient water so uh, uh, inter cropping is also important and when we are going for the livestock because uh, without livestock the agriculture is not possible and even though the uh, livestock will not survive without agriculture and so these are we can say these are the two sides of the one coin and according to that the forage crops plays important for the livestock after either maybe the maize crop is there cow is there for the special forage cow feed then the oat is there then stylo is there parsley is there so you have to provide the uh, balanced nutrition to the livestock also. Just like the, whatever the balanced nutrition for the human being we are taking. In that way you should uh, also, because uh, here not only cereal, so you have to go for both the crops. Either it may be the, we can say the, some legume crops as well as the cereal crops are there. In that way you have to do the comp, because the, whatever the protein, proteins are there. So the more the source of the protein according to that, or whatever the quality parameter as you know that the ADF, MDF, food fiber, food protein is there. <coughs> that quality parameter is also important when we are feeding for the livestock. The palatability is also important. So digestibility as well as the palatability. So the, just like the sorghum is there, African tall, maize crop is there, lucerne that is also the, we can say the perennial crop is there. So we are taking for the three year, years continuously. <laughs> And the hybrid nuclear, that uh, whatever the different varieties we develop by our university, especially the Pule Jaiwanta, Pule Bunwanta. So these varieties uh, are Pule Eshwanta. These varieties are developed by our university or forage improvement project. And so we can utilize that uh, water for the livestock component. Then the second component is the horticulture component. And in that, uh, you see that the, especially the irrigated area is there, either the grape is there or the banana is there. Uh, <coughs> uh, banana, even though the gawa, these are the irrigated fruit crops. Are there. And, uh, the some uh, we can say the rain fed crops, uh, especially the or those are requiring the irrigated fruit crops are there, just like the pomegranate is there, anola is there, drumstick is there. So, that uh, even though the mango is there, that are requiring the less water. And according to that, you have to do the plantation uh, of the according to the location specific. So, whether uh, you know the sweet orange is there, mandarin orange is there. <laughs> <clears throat> so we can uh, grow this uh, type of the horticultural uh, crops also. Then uh, you know the whatever the concept nowadays is the that is the ultra high density planting. Basically, was it? It changed. The ultra high density planting concept, especially the mango is there, or even though the gawa is there, pomegranate is there. So we can grow the this uh, ultra high density planting planting concept because whatever the earlier uh, suppose the mango plantation earlier we are doing at ten by ten meter. Later on, the concept was coming a high density planting concept that uh, we have done the planting at 5 by 5 meters. But nowadays, what is the ultra high density planting concept is there? So, the, generally, we are doing the planting of that mango uh, because the pruning technique is important, and we are doing the planting at uh, 4 by 2 meter spacing is there. So, according to that, uh, there is the need of the hour, you have to go so the 10 to 15 times more plants uh, as compared to our conventional planting. <coughs> then vegetable crops also important and whatever these uh, crops we have taken uh, at our uh, farm, research farm and the, just like the okra is there so that uh, you can, the farmer can pay the good market price when we are going for this uh, type of the vegetable crops and most of the crops you have to try to take in the off season then and then you can get the more market price. So the protected cultivation, so the whatever the different shed nets are there, then the pole houses are there in that we have to go and especially these uh, when we are going for the different most of the protected vegetable uh, uh, cultivation technology so you have to follow that you should try to grow these uh, crops in the off season so definitely when we are trying in the off season then and then you can pay the good market price and here just like the cabbage or the cauliflower is there then the uh, 
cucumber is there so even though the okra is there so you can get the good market price when we are cultivating in the off season then the uh, under the in the protected cultivation we also tried during last year like the turmeric and the ginger is are there then the carnation is there so according to that uh, you can grow these crops nowadays because it's having the more yield potential and uh, from last two years we are cultivating the turmeric and the ginger in the protected cultivation also <coughs> then uh, uh, nursery management as a part of the horticulture either maybe we can say the pomology or the vulnerable culture that is the vegetable cultivation is there or even though the nursery nursery component is also one of the important component of the integrated farming city you can uh, 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 prepare the different types of the seedling either it may be fruit crops you have to require only the mother plant and uh, then uh, once if you have the mother plant then you can prepare the good quality seedlings at your home also no problem then the terrace gardening or even though the kitchen gardening concept is there so we can uh, go for that when the land holding is less or even though in the uh, uh, city area the formal uh, we can say that uh, uh, in the city area so if you have the land uh, that uh, having the terrace availability in that you can uh, grow the such type of the different uh, uh, vegetables specially and uh, for family needs we can uh, uh, grow this type of the uh, terrace gardening concept is there you know the, the uh, in the rural area also if the, they are having the less land holding either it may be or 2 hour or the 5 hour you have to prepare grow the different types of the vegetables multi-layer farming concept and uh, in that you have to grow the whatever the leafy vegetables are there so you can produce for your family consumption <coughs> that was the you can say the crop base or the articulated base integrated farming system. Then the third one is the livestock based integrated farming system is there, and in that especially the dairy compound is there, then the sheep is there, goat is there, and the poultry is there. So we in the dairy farming, so the just like the uh, exotic breeds are there or the triple cross breed developed by our university, that is the fully driven is there, then the buffalo compound is there, this especially the Mura or the Mesana or the Jafrabadi, then Surti and the Pandrapuri Bofferos are there. So according to that uh, location specific, you have to select the grid and you have to include in the integrated farming system. So this is the, we can see the dairy compound is there and uh, how that becomes the commercial uh, dairy, boat, uh, dairy farming is there. And uh, here, <coughs> actually this is the, my uh, uh, native place. Uh, so that is my own uh, dairy farming is there. And in that way, so you can go for the commercialization. I have the 25, uh, uh, these uh, HF breeds are there. And uh, daily 150 liters of the uh, milk we have received. And so according to that, uh, this is the, nowadays, the livestock component plays important role and especially the dairy farming. So when we are going for the sustainable income, definitely the dairy compound also plays important role. Even though the, we can say the one, one uh, man can manage all these things you have to go for the mechanization either that milking machine and the whatever the uh, uh, putty machine is there so the chop cutter is there so in that way so you have to use even though you have to prepare the silage bags then the hydroponic is there in that way you have to prepare this type of the fodder for the uh, dairy compound <clears throat> then this is the goat compound is there and especially the you know these are the some commercial goat farmings are there and the uh, whatever the goat comp goat breeds are there especially the, these white color breeds is uh, our sangamneri breeds so they are this is our local breed is there and that is for for, for we can say uh, both purpose milk purpose as, as well as the for the meat purpose is there and another black color uh, breed is there that is the usman of the breed is there and that is for the we can say the only meat purpose breed is there so according to that you have to select because uh, many times we are bringing the different uh, breeds from the outside these states but the survival percentage as well as the uh, disease problem is also major but uh, when we are using for the local breeds definitely that becomes the very well sustainable <coughs> and the uh, you know the uh, increasing the temperature when the temperature is goes around 45 degrees centigrade under that that can sustain very well either that uh, usman of the goat or the sangamneri uh, goat is there so this is also the commercial is there, commercial goat farm is there, and uh, the azolla also plays an important role. So the azolla 
also it is the rich source of the protein and you can use that as well as uh, especially either it may be for the dairy component or the goat component and the poultry component also so these are the some important breeds like the usmanabadi breed and the sangamneri breeds that developed by our university and the kokan kanyal so that is also for the maharashtra but where the heavy rainfall is there in that that can sustain very well then the berari uh, is also for the vidarbha region of the maharashtra uh, where the temperature goes 47 48 degrees centigrade and uh, even though the zero goat that is also popular in the rajasthan especially so according to that which type of the breeds you are including in your farming system model that is important and uh, that it should be the location specific breed you have to select to minimize the risk in this uh, uh, goat component then the, this is also the commercial poultry farming there <coughs> Uh, so 10,000 uh, poultry birds are there and uh, especially the uh, generally whatever our local breeds are there we can get the eggs maximum 180 to 200 tens but uh, these breeds just like the after the 18 weeks onward they can lay the egg and according to that uh, uh, either it may be the BB, uh, BB 300 is there then the bovines are there then uh, you all know the low man is there these such type of the breeds are there Definitely, we can get the more real potential from that. And uh, so, from uh, generally, if the 10,000 birds are there, so the 9,400 to 9,500 eggs you have to get daily. And so, the, if you, you have to take the cup of uh, price of rupees, uh, it depends upon the season. But uh, in uh, uh, meanwhile, so in uh, last uh, five to seven months, so the whatever the uh, field material is required. I admit the soybean is there, then the rice bran is there, then the maize is there. So the cost of that input has increased, and so that's why if uh, you are having the, your uh, uh, if you are going for the commercial poultry, then uh, you should have the, your uh, uh, field meal also. So that will reduce the cost of one rupee per kg field cost by when you are having this type of the unit. Then the <coughs> fourth model that is the agroforestry based integrated farming system model and the that agroforestry species, uh, the woody perennial species are there, either maybe the tree shrubs or the palms are there, then the bamboos are there. So you have to use and whatever the forestry area is there, you have to use for the rearing, uh, grazing purpose also. And uh, different, uh, I will not waste the time much more. And here the agroforestry system, especially the uh, agri silvipatural system is there, agri horticultural system is there, silvipatural system is there, in that the tree patcher and the animal is there. <coughs> Then uh, agri horticultural system is there, agri silvipatural system, agri silvipatural system, then homestead agroforestry is there, silvi agricultural system is there, agri pisciculture silviculture system is there, and pisciculture silvicultural systems are there. Here the uh, fish plus the multipurpose trees uh, is the combination. So according to that, these are the different agroforestry systems are there, and especially the beekeeping also plays an important role when we have the natural forest area is there. So what is the best option to improve the uh, yield potential in the integrated farming system? So the, the uh, main uh, options, so the productivity and profitability we can increase by when we are going for the integrated farming system. Balanced food you have to get because here the integration is there. Either it may be goat, or the milk is there, the meat is there, then the uh, mushroom production is there. So uh, different uh, cereal pulses, soil seeds are there, horticulture crops are there. So balanced food we <coughs> for the family we can get from that resource recycling will be possible money around here i already explained un and the upham employment yes it will be possible so the whatever the farm family members are there so the, that family members can get also employment and as well as the whatever the uh, members or the uh, persons from the that uh, uh, villages that can also uh, get, get the opportunity when this type of the integrated farming system is there, pollution free environment is there, then uh, it solves the water as well as the energy crisis and uh, it provides the opportunity for the agri based industries and also improve the standard of living of the farmers also. And here I will show the some uh, integrated farming system models, uh, especially developed at MPKV Rahauri. Uh, so <clears throat> I did my work in the integrated farming system in the year of, we can say the 2008-9 and uh, in that period I did uh, the work on the this uh, integrated farming system model I have developed the one uh, two acre integrated farming system model uh, for the uh, medium farmers uh, small and medium farmers and the two acre that is the area allocation is there 
25% area allocated for the crop component, 25%, 20% area for the horticulture component, dairy and the poultry component, so the 2.5% area, fishery we have that one line farm pond, so the 2.5% area is allocated for the fishery component, and this is the area allocation of the 2 acre IFS model. And that uh, model we have developed, uh, especially that was the, that was my PhD research topic, and in that way, so the we have included the different uh, soybean crop. So the what are the dominant crop in that area? Then uh, sugarcane is also the dominant, but uh, the uh, as you know that the seventy percent water is utilized only for the only four percent area under the sugarcane, but we are utilizing the sixty eight percent of the water only for the sugarcane. And so that's why the water productivity is less in case of that. And so how is there any alternative for the sugarcane crop? Or how we can improve the water use efficiency in case of that sugarcane? So according to that, uh, uh, we have selected that crop, uh, uh, space planting in the sugarcane and the drip irrigation, utilization of the drip irrigation system for the sugarcane. Then the groundnut on the micro sprinkler, then banana, pomegranate, <coughs> then onion, uh, onion for both the vegetable purpose as well as the seed production. Then the forage crops, maize, lucerne, uh, so the poultry component, and this is the, our breed, Pulitriveni breed. So uh, we have uh, taken that in the internal farming system. That model was for two acre area, and the one line farm pond was there. In that we have utilized the uh, we have used the integrated culture of the Katla row and the Brugal for uh, two years. So this is the uh, we have already <coughs> done the work on these. Uh, uh, especially the water productivity, then the what is the profitability of that IFS model, then what is the budget, water budgeting and what is the water productivity. And here we have utilized most of the crops we have gone for the micro irrigation system. Either it may be the overhead sprinkler, micro sprinkler, drip irrigation is there. So most of the crops we have tried to take on the micro irrigation system. And so from that we have worked on the water budgeting and the water productivity also. So this is the, you can say the IFS model. So that is developed for the two acre area under the irrigated condition. So this is the aerial view of this uh, IFS model. We have started, we are the pioneer uh, in this uh, farming system. We have started the, our work in the year 2005 and from 2009 onwards we have given the, uh, for the farming community till we have given the four recommendations. Either it may be for rainbow area, it may be for the small farm, medium farmers, it may be for small farmers, it may be for the marginal farmers. So under that situation, we are doing the work uh, in our integrated farming city and whatever our topic is there, so the sustainable resource management for the climate smart integrated farming system. I have developed that one model also, so the, that is for the one acre area. And uh, to identify ecological and economically viable enterprises for the different regions under changing climate scenario. As uh, nowadays, whatever we can say, uh, climate change is there and under that situation, always uh, after four to five days or within the one week, so the lot of variation in the climate, either fluctuation in the uh, temperature or increasing in the temperature, uh, uh, cloudy situation is there, rainfall is occur, hail storm is occur, and under that situation it is very difficult. When we are going only for the crop component, definitely that is more risk because that uh, crop component is directly exposed in the sunlight, and if the hail storm situation is occur, a uh, complete crop get failure. Uh, but uh, when the, the like the protected cultivation is there or the livestock is there, poultry is there, water is there, we can get the sustainable income from that. <coughs> and uh, uh, the another objective to undertake the resource budgeting in the system perspective with the special reference to the soil, water, nutrient and the energy and to evaluate the low carbon production module in the uh, system and to identify and uh, evaluate the secondary agriculture revenues in the farming system uh, to attract the rural youth uh, to become the entrepreneurs. And according to that, uh, this model we have started the work from the 2017 and during this year we will give the recommendation on that. 75% area is allocated for the crop component, horticulture component uh, 20%, then the uh, livestock 3% area is allocated for the livestock, especially the cattle and goat and the poultry share. <coughs> the forage crops that are comes under the crop compound and the vermi compost unit is there and uh, so this is the total uh, one hectare model is there and uh, the crop compounds are there these are the cropping sequence so maize, chickpea vegetable crops uh, especially in the summer season we have taken the leafy vegetable crops are there then the soybean onion sweet corn is there then the third sequence cotton wheat green mandarin crops we are taking to build up the soil fertility 
the sugar cane is a annual crop and the lucerne is also perennial and hybrid napier is also perennial once you have done the planting after the, up to 3 years there is no need to, uh, to again resow that uh, lucerne also so these are the crop compounds were selected and this is the economics of this uh, integrated farming scheme so only from crop compound we have get the net mold return of 1 lakh to 8000 uh, from the uh, <coughs> crop compound only whatever the 75 percent area, area allocation is to that and in that uh, you have to see the net returns uh, especially the uh, maximum net mold return we have obtained from the cropping second second that is the soybean onion and the sweet corn is there even though the soybean we have paid the more market price more than the 7000 rupees per quintal onion also we are catching the 12 rupees per kg uh, cost yeah, income is there <coughs> and in uh, sweet corn also we can get the good prices either it may be the one pound for two rupees per kg so according to that uh, this uh, cropping system second found uh, more uh, remunerative in case of the economic returns then second one uh, in that horticultural compound so the 75 percent area for crop compound 0.20 hectare that is the 20 percent area we have allocated for the instead of getting for the sole uh, fruit crop we have uh, adopted the concept of the mixed book cropping that is the mango, mango pomegranate, custard apple, drumstick is there and uh, earlier two years uh, so when that uh, fruit crops are at a, a seedling stage or establishment stage in that period we have taken the marigold as the intercrop for uh, first two years and uh, generally in the fruit crops when we are taking only the mango crop you can get the income after three years but here whatever the model we have selected mixed fruit crop cropping concept we have selected so the within the two months we can get the uh, floricultural uh, income then uh, drumstick you have to get the income after five months and also uh, pomegranate as well as the <coughs> uh, custard apple you have to get the income from the second year so according to that uh, you know we have gone for the mechanization as well as the beekeeping compound is there uh, especially for the uh, fruit setting uh, proper uh, pollination we have used the beekeeping uh, component <coughs> and the burnt plantation also we have done the burnt plantation and of the papaya then the drumstick is there anola is there then the this is the our uh, dairy compound is there and uh, here the two uh, initially we have the two poly polygrivini bridge was there and uh, this is completely open wire system is there and in that uh, this uh, now the four cows are there and this uh, two open wire system low cost open wire system we have prepared and uh, from October to the, we can say the June month. So we are keeping that uh, sugar cane trash below that cow and after every 45 days, we are uh, removing that, uh, uh, whatever the waste material, cow dung as well as the, uh, this uh, waste material. And we are using that material for the preparation of the vermi compost. We are filling that material in the vermi compost bed and uh, within the 40 to 45 days, we can get the good quality of the vermi compost. And that is the value addition from that cow dung that will be possible. And even though the nutrient content is more because of that whatever the cow urine is there so that completely uh, up to 45 days so that uh, whatever the waste material is there that will be absorbed the, in that waste material and so the our uh, uh, generally in the volume compost you see the references generally 1.7 uh, percent nitrogen is there but uh, we are having the 2.5 percent nitrogen is there so automatically we can reduce the cost of that uh, inputs also at the volume compost then we have this low cost uh, goat compound is there, so the Sangamneri goat is there and uh, here the 10 dose and the 1 buck initially were purchased and uh, now we are having the 27 goats and the we can say the 11 uh, kids are there and uh, continuously we are selling that uh, till uh, we have get the more income from that goat compound and uh, that is the boon for the rain fed agriculture, we have inputted in the irrigated condition but uh, when there is less water availability, definitely the combination of uh, which compounds are suitable for the rain fed region, which compounds are suitable for the uh, irrigated region. So the, that selection is also important. Then we are also preparing the different hydroponic uh, <coughs> water production. And uh, when there is the need, especially in the summer season, when there is the scarce of the water and the situation, we are using only, we have conducted the, some experiment with the help of the MS and PhD students. We have used the different material either weed, oat, barley, then uh, mage, uh, permulate, uh, sorghum, we have used that material and we have worked out the different quality parameters but uh, we have get the more green biomass especially from the mage 
1 kg you have to get the 8 to 10 kg of the biomass within the 7 days and the silage preparation is also there so we are preparing the good quality of the silage for the goat and the sheep component then the next component in our integrated farming system model is the poultry compound is there and these poultry compounds we are harvesting the 4 batches in a year uh, 500 birds per batch is there so the total 2000 birds in a year is there so according to that we have also get the more income more than the 125000 so the uh, from the poultry component throughout the year that is the net income well, okay so that is the net income is there so this is the our uh, poultry component uh, <coughs> that is uh, for uh, broiler purpose is there then uh, this is also the our uh, goat component then uh, uh, vermicompost unit is there so the another component is the vermicompost uh, unit is there and in that uh, vermicompost unit uh, we have the four uh, tetra vermi uh, four uh, NADAP system uh, vermi compost bed uh, five tetra vermi beds are there we have prepared the low cost technology beds also and uh, in both way heat method and the pit method heat method and pit method we can prepare this uh, good quality of the vermi compost and uh, this is uh, one of the our best unit because uh, this is uh, uh, whatever the uh, net income we have get from the milk more than that we can get from this cow dung so after value addition of that cow dung uh, after preparing the uh, vermi compost is there so this is the our unit is there and uh, in that the we have the uh, from two comp if the farmer is having the two cows so from that we can prepare the 8 to 10 tons of the good quality of the vermi compost from the one hectare area, whatever the residue material is there, as well as the whatever the cow dung is there, so from that you can prepare the 8 to 10 tons of the vermi compost, and 10 rupees is there, you can get the 80,000 to the 9, 1 lakh rupees from the value addition from that cow dung or the vermi compost unit is there. And here we have prepared the, our brand of the Pule Bhumitra, so the Pule is uh, the name of our university, Pule, uh, that is the social reformer Mahatma Jyotiba Pule. And so that that pule is the name is given, and bhumitra boom means the soil, and mitra means the brand. Brand of soil is the earthworm, and so that's why we have prepared the brand of the pule bhumitra vermi compost. We are preparing the vermi wash. We are selling the vermi culture also to the uh, farmers. And this is our unit. So the nearly about the ten tons of the vermi compost day in a year we are preparing um, in the integrated farming system, and. Uh, According to the object, you see the whatever the net income we have get, <coughs> whatever the our model is there. <coughs> so one family, if the, in one family the four members are there in one family, so that family how they can increase the income of rupees six lakhs in a year. So at least to my uh, when we are going to such type of the model, the farmer should get at least fifty thousand per month. And then and then you can get the, you can say it is just like the salary, okay. So just like the salary of the government. And so if the farmer, they can get the 50 rupees, 50,000 per month, definitely whatever the requirement of the family is there, he can fulfill that. Even though for the education of their child, he can utilize that money. And uh, there is no need to go for the service also. So he is uh, uh, the own entrepreneur, we can say. And uh, this is the, we can see the net one return, so uh, they are obtained. So the more more net, uh, net one return they are obtained from the crop component, then the dairy 14%, then the goat 25%, you see poultry 23%. So the means, <coughs> whatever the different models we have uh, given, in that we have observed that, nearly about the 55 to 60%, even though up to the 70% contribution is from the livestock. Then and then farmer can sustain very well. So the how there is the importance of the livestock in the integrated farming system. So this is the employment generation. Then uh, according to the objective to undertake the resource budgeting in the system perspective with the special reference to the soil water nutrient. And we have studied that how much nutrient is added from the recycling of the material. Also we have worked out the how much quantity of the manure you have to get, what is the nutrient content from that and uh, from within the recycling of that material, uh, how much NPK you have to get. 
so they may have about 120 kg of the nitrogen for 45 kg of the phosphorus and 55 kg of the potassium you have to get uh, after recycling of that material within the system so that is also important even though we have worked out the water productivity energy use efficiency and in that we have worked out the physical water productivity as well as the economic productivity so what is the <clears throat> water utilized by the each component and what is the output from that and you have worked out the physical water productivity so the yield divided by the water the total quantity of water utilized for the each component and economic water productivity what are the net return is there divided by the total amount of water utilized for that each component we also work out the energy uh, output energy input then what is the energy balance and uh, we work out the energy use efficiency is there so because of the time limitation so uh, just we'll go uh, fastly then the next one is the uh, that is the accumulate uh, the low carbon production module in this system just like the earlier the we have worked out the energy efficiency by using the software of the tnu software is there and with the help of that we have worked out these uh, uh, all the energy input output is there gg mission is also there so according Uh, uh, Dr. Ulhas sir, you are not audible. Hello? Am I audible? Just give me a second, I will call sir. I think sir got disconnected. Just a second. Sir got disconnected. Please have patience. Give me two minutes. I'll call him. Out. 